Welcome to Something Special Designs by Tina Williams, where I create cottage, French country, shabby, and farmhouse decor, all with thrifted items. Sit back and enjoy today's video, and if you like it, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Hi everybody, this is Tina. Hope you're all doing well today. We're going to be doing four projects today, and first off, we're going to start off using these molds from IOD. One of them is the new mold, and this is a picture frame that I have thrifted. Um, what I love about this is it has the flat surface around it, and that will allow me to use these molds today. I have two pieces that I already uh, have cast, probably from another project. We're using Dainty Flourishes, Classic Elements, and then the new IOD mold here, and that is the Conservatory Labels. What we're going to be doing today is we are going to be um, using resin uh, for this. And we're going to go ahead and pour uh, several elements from each of these. I'm not sure which all I'm going to use, but I am using my uh, resin that I've picked up from Amazon. You can use the Amazing Casting if you like. It works very much like the Amazing Casting resin, and it is called... Let's resin. Um, I'll drop that link in the description box so you can get it, but it works pretty much exactly the same. It's just a little bit cheaper. You mix 50% of each, uh, part A and part B, and then you mix it until it's clear. And you don't want to overmix because it starts to set up. And I am pouring these, um, and I over pour a lot of these but anyway after you pour them you just let them sit for 10 minutes so while that is um, curing we are going to be uh, painting our picture frame and I am using DIY paint and apothecary which I really really love this color and I have already um, sprayed this frame with a, a clear uh, matte sealer Rustoleum because of the red color I didn't want it to bleed through so we're gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing this is a beautiful beautiful uh, color I'm thinking about painting an entire room in this color so uh, this takes about two coats we're gonna do this coat and then we're gonna go ahead and add our um, our uh, resin pieces to it now I know a lot of people they add the resin piece first or their clay first and then do it so everything's already done and we're going to go ahead and pull those uh, resin pieces out and I don't use all of the ones that I did I mainly because I I usually always make too much and I uh, I do extra pieces but anyway I figure out what pieces I want to use and I actually cut a few pieces to fit and then I am going to take my Gorilla Glue um, you can use you know any glue that you have I like this glue it's a Gorilla construction adhesive and it, it holds really well and it dries pretty quickly so anyway I'm just going to make sure I have glue on everything and the one thing that I do do while I'm doing this is even though um, these pieces are flat they're not perfectly flat so I do heat up the pieces with my um, heat gun before I put them down uh, just to kind of make them a little bit more flexible now when you can pull them from your uh, mold and right you know when they're still a little bit flexible and do that but uh, I usually don't have enough time because it takes me forever to figure out where I'm putting things um, as you saw before I I take a ruler to make sure things are symmetrical and you know just as best I can so now I'm just gonna go over these pieces I let them dry a little bit for about uh, probably 30 minutes to an hour 
And I'm going to just be going over uh, the resin pieces with the uh, DIY uh, apothecary. And they paint up really well. They have kind of a matte uh, finish to them that accepts paint really well. Oh, when I left the middle piece in that board, uh, mainly because I wanted to paint the back of it as well, because I did paint the back of this picture frame because it is one that has the little stand to hold up. And the way that I'm going to use it, you can either hang this or you can, uh, you know, uh, set it up. But I'm going to be probably setting it up. to stand so after I let that dry um, I'm going in with a little bit of salt wash mix with the uh, DIY apothecary a little bit of salt wash and I'm doing that just to go around the edges of all of the castings and I do that just to have this seamless uh, you know uh, edge to it because you will always have a little bit of a gap on any type of uh, mold that you put down and I just like for that to disappear so I'll go ahead and do that all, all along the edges and I'll probably add a little of the salt wash to the rest of the frame just because I'll be adding um, some different waxes to this later and I like how adding the salt wash to the mixture allows the uh, wax to have something to um, some tooth for it to hang on to I mean it will anyway but I just like the little extra texture in there so after that dries I'm going over everything uh, with a Dixie Bell clear matte sealer just getting in there and making sure I have a nice good seal you do have to seal your um, DIY paint because it's a clay based paint and it is not it does not have a sealer in it so you do have to do that and this will seal it all and then we're also going to be doing several waxes on top of this so if you don't have the sealer on there um, you don't really have a lot of control over those waxes so now we are using uh, Dixie Belle uh, white wax and I'm using a wax brush and I'm making sure I get all in all of the little crevices and little uh, spots in our uh, our little castings that we have. And the good thing about this is this will really uh, give you some definition on those uh, castings. And having that clear sealer down allows me to take off as much of that wax as you know I want on the white wax I actually leave a lot on so but we're going to be doing other things to this too so and I'm also uh, wiping off a lot of the white wax with the uh, just a I'm using a, a just a paper towel or rag and then I'm adding a gray wax and what's it called the grunge grunge gray from Dix Dixie Bell And I know it looks like a lot, but I'll be able, because I've already done the sealer and I've already done one coat of the white wax, a lot of this is coming off. But what that does is it's going to give that, uh, those castings, it's going to give it a uh, vintage look to it. Now, of course, if you don't like that, it, uh, you definitely could skip those steps. But... I like what it does is it gives it a more vintage look. 
So now what I'm doing is I am going to be using the uh, Apothecary Labels. That is the new IOD uh, release. And I am I spelled out the word Le Pen, which is rabbit in French. And I'm going to be stamping it on there. You can also use these to make an impression in your label. What's great about this is it works in conjunction with that mold. So, and I'm also taking a wipe after I stamp it. I'm using black permanent ink. And I'm just wiping it down just to give it a more uh, distressed look. I used uh, black archival ink. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking some rub and buff. And I'm going to go ahead and just go over the edges of the castings just to give it a little bit more of a French country look. And the color that I'm using is Antique Gold Rub and Buff. And I'm not going over it everywhere, but, you know, just in little spots to make it look worn and old. I went over the label. And I really do think that this finishes it all off and gives it very much a French country look. So after I've done that, I've got my picture. And this is a canvas print from Timu of these beautiful rabbits. And all I'm doing is taking some double-sided tape. And I'm taping this to the back of the, you know, the picture frame that we had in there. I take it out after. And I am going to have to cut some of this off. I will have to say that Timu, their sizers are really weird. Uh, I don't know. They're just, they don't seem to get their sizes right. But what this is going to do is um, it's going to allow me to change out the picture later if I want to. And it does have the picture lay flat. I do need to go back over it. It's a little lumpy. But anyway, this is what it looks like when it's done. I think it turned out really good. So we are on to project number two. And this is a tin tray. It is not a silver plate tray. This is like a $2 tray, probably. And I thrifted that for like 50 cents somewhere. And I am using a DIY White Swan. And I'm also using, uh, I'll be using DIY one apoth a DIY apothecary again. And I have already sprayed this with a Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer actually a couple times before I even started doing this. So I'm going to go over this front and back two times with the White Swan. And then let it dry completely between coats. And let the whole thing dry before we move on to the next step. So now I'm taking my apothecary and I am going to be taking uh, a brush and go all the way around. I'm using this fan brush and I'm uh, going to just you do that to right to the edge. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge with it. But I'm taking apothecary and I'm just doing the edge. I go all the way around the entire rim. And I have a fine brush that I get right up to the edge. And now what I'm doing is I have these metal uh, feet. I bought these off of Amazon. And I'm going to be attaching these to the tray just to give it a, a little lift, make it a little riser. I think whenever you do that, it elevates your project and makes it a little bit more high end. 
and I am painting these in apothecary and I have not put a seal or anything on those I'm just gonna I uh, use the chalk paint I've done it before and it works pretty well especially since I seal these later so I do four, all four of those and then I will let those dry while they're drying, what I'm doing is I'm going over my entire tray with a Dixie Belle Clear Matte Sealer. And I'll do the front and the back. Just to give that one good coat of sealer on there. And that'll uh, allow me to go to the next step. Which is we're going to be adding a transfer. And this is the new release spring release for from iron orchards and it is called lover of flowers um, it's a 8 by 12 sheets and this is a very very vintage uh, looking flower transfers and all I'm doing is I put I usually put like one piece of the transfer on top down first and then I add the other later I kind of centered it on the tray I'm going to make sure everything's down the way I want it before I completely put it down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a transfer stick. I couldn't find my one that came with the pack. But anyway, you're just going to rub it down until uh, you see. You'll see the uh, transfer kind of changing colors. Uh, that means it's... it's uh, it's adhered to the piece and when you're doing this uh, you just want to make sure that your surface like I made sure that my uh, clear coat was completely dry so it transferred really well the one thing I am doing is I'm taking my transfer sheet on the shiny side and I am burnishing it uh, that just rubbing over it to make sure that everything is down well and so now what I'm doing is I'm adhering my feet to the bottom and I just use my Gorilla Glue for that and I will let that dry and now the last thing well actually not the last thing one of the last things we do is I have a mixture of my Dixie Belle clear coat and some Ranger uh, vintage photo which basically makes it like a glaze and a sealer at the same time. I'm sealing my transfer and I'm also kind of, kind of antiquing my tray a little bit at the same time. You do need to seal in your transfers when you do them. So what this does is this is going to tint my sealer and it's going to tint the tray. And I just go over the whole thing and I actually uh, did this end up doing it two times and I will uh, take a rag and wipe some of it off where I think it's uh, too dark in the middle I kind of leave it on the edges uh, just like you would like an antiquing wax or something you see I go back over the edges a little bit more So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my permanent ink, archival ink, ground espresso, and I'm going over all the edges, not all of them, just a few of them here and there, and then taking a wipe and wiping it back so it's not too dark, just to give it a more vintage look. And then I'm taking my antique gold rub and buff and going over all of the highlight, the edges, not all of them, but a lot of them. And here's our finished riser. And this is from probably originally a $2 tray. I think it turned out really good.
So now we're on to project number three. This is just a battery operated candle. And um, I mean, you can use any any candle, but I would not recommend like one that you actually burn for this project. Uh, uh, battery operated is what you'll need. And what we're going to be doing is we are just going to be uh, coating this with Dixie Bell's uh, clear coat. Any clear coat will work. But we're using um, just one coat over this and you really do need to use a clear coat in order for this to work because I've tried it without it and it's pretty hard. And just go over it and let it dry completely. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking through the new release IOD, what we used on the uh, riser in its lover of flowers. And I'm picking out a transfer to use. And I wanted something that would go with our uh, riser that we made because I'm making a little vignette out of it. And so I've picked out what I want to use and I'm kind of figuring out where I want to place it on my candle and of course my uh, clear coat is completely dry. And we're going to go through the same process that we did on the riser. We're just going to place it down and then I actually found my real um, IOD uh, transfer stick. The other one worked really well too. I think it was a Prima or something. Now you can try this without putting the sealer on, but I will tell you that if you've ever like waxed a piece and tried to, uh, to put a transfer down, it's not impossible, but it's a lot harder. Uh, by putting that clear coat down, it it gives this transfer something to stick onto. And when you're all done, you do the same thing. You want to burnish it, make sure it's on there really good. And so now we're going to put the back on and you go through the same process. These are just the words portion of it. So when we get all done and we burnish it, you do want to seal it. Um, I'm sealing it with uh, a clear wax and I'm using Dorland's wax, D-O-R-L-A-N-D-S. It's just a clear wax. And that's all we do with that. And that will fit inside the next part of this project. So this is a thrifted uh, birdcage candle holder that I I got it at a thrift store. I think I just paid a couple dollars for it. And what I'm doing now is I'm going over this with uh, Modern Masters Bronze. And it is uh, a patina uh, paint. And I'm not covering the whole thing. I'm just going over, you know, good portions of it. But I want it, I still want you to be able to see the black through it. going over all the little bars and while it's still wet I'm spraying the patina spray the blue and the green on it it's probably not going to patina much because I didn't put that much of it down and it didn't it did a little bit of patina and that that works for me but I'm also going to be doing a second step 
And I have Finnebar's uh, Patina. And this is this is Effect Paste from ben Finnebar. And it has three different colors in it. And one of them is kind of a bronzy copper look. And I'm going to add that to this just with my finger. And I'm not putting it on everywhere. I'm just putting it in in certain spots. Now this uh, set is not something that uh, chemically changes. It's actually just three different colors of paste that give you the same effect or a similar effect without actually uh, waiting for the patina. And this is a great thing to have in your arsenal uh, if you don't want to wait for the special effects or the effects aren't enough or you want to add to it. So it has a kind of a very light green patina and then more of a turquoise The light green one has some texture to it. And I actually add those on top of each other to kind of blend them a little bit and then do them separately. That's the lighter green and that's the one that has the texture. Because any time it a type of patina metal will have some texture to it and I think it, it's very authentic looking. I used in my last uh, video their rust uh, effects and it works extremely well too to give you that rust effect. So I'm just putting it in spots all over. I'm not putting it you know on the entire thing. You'll notice I'm very hooked on um, all of these different patinas. <laughs> I really love them. I think it takes your project to a completely different level. They're fun. I think it makes your uh, projects look uh, more artistic, more high-end. And if you're selling them, they sell a lot better than just a, a plain black I could have sprayed it white or something but now I put on the turquoise and I'm actually blending that with the green as well So now I'm going to be taking some Spanish moss and I have sprayed it with my uh, super hold hairspray that I got from the uh, Dollar Tree. Um, you could use glue or whatever else you want, but I do know that that actually kind of makes it stick together really well. And it also uh, helps a lot of the shedding. And I basically just put some Spanish moss all the way around where the candle, you know, would go. I'm leaving the space where the candle goes free. And then all I'm going to be doing is I'm just taking some these little fern things that I have, little greenery, and I'm just going around the edges with that just to add a little interest to it. It has that little space around it. 
And I have some little uh, white flowers that I'm cutting. I'm just cutting off pieces of picks that I have. And some of them I am hot gluing to the, the Spanish moss, but I'm not attaching anything to the actual like candle holder base at all because I figure you know if I want to change this out I can although with hot glue you can just heat it up and usually take it off but you know it's still kind of a mess but I'm just basically hot gluing any of the little um, edges I'm taking like a little bit and putting it in the edge of the uh, flower or the piece of greenery and here's our finished project I think it turned out really cute So now we're on to project number four, our last project. And here I have this beautiful tin, uh, vintage tin that I bought from a lady on Facebook Marketplace. She had like a, a box of them that I bought for really cheap. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just taking some floral foam and I'm putting it in the bottom of it. I'm leaving about a half inch of room from the top. And just filling it in and now I'm taking just a skewer and I'm cutting it uh, the size so that what I can do is I want to uh, have this top stay open while I put my little arrangement in there so I just put that in this in the uh, foam and put a tiny drop of glue I don't want to like permanently alter this uh, tin and so now I'm taking some Spanish moss and I'm going to be putting that on top. And I do uh, spray it with my hairspray again just to kind of get it in a to stay in a glob. But I also hot glue it onto the top of the foam, but I'm not gluing it to the actual tin. So it'll stay because it is up there pretty close to the top. And I'm taking my little uh, silicone spatula thing and smushing it down, making sure it's sticking. And I get it all in there so you can't see the foam. And I spray it with some more of my hairspray. <laughs> and what I'm doing is I'm taking some rub and buff. And I'm painting our little stick, our little skewer gold. So it'll blend into the background of the tin. Although really when I get done with this, I really didn't have to do that. So now what I have is this little bunny that I thrifted. And he's a cute little bunny, but he's brown and he's cool. You know, I mean, I don't know. He's just kind of plain. And... I am trying to make a little gold bunny. And what I am using is Inca Gold. And honestly, you could use any gold paint that you have. And it's actually a, a paste from Viva. But you could use any kind of gold metallic paint that you have. You don't have to use something like this. I just, this is just what I have. And I'm taking a brush and going over it. And this is really actually a pretty detailed little, little bunny. So I take that and I also take a, uh, 
stencil brush to kind of make sure I get into all of the little uh, detail with it. I use my finger too. So now what I'm doing is I am covering my bunny with some glue. And this is a uh, just a uh, sticky glue that I have. It's like a two-way glue. It stays sticky. And it's called Zig. And I'm attaching some foil to the uh, rabbit after I, I put the glue on. The glue has to be tacky. There is a special glue that you can buy for this. But I ran out and this, this stuff works just as well. You just need a glue that stays tacky and that's this zig does that as well. And so what I'm doing is I'm just taking pieces of the foil and I'm putting it on the bunny. And going this extra step, you could have just left it with the gold paint uh, or the metallic paint. But this really is going to make it look like a real, uh, you know, little uh, gold bunny, the gold foil. It just takes it up a notch. I always take things to the limit, so, you know, it just, don't be surprised. Now, any of these things, you can stop at any point. You do not have to go as far as I do, but it really, really does make it look gold. And this, uh, this foil stuff is not expensive. I bought mine off of uh, Amazon, and you, I've also bought some off of Timu, and it's very inexpensive. It's expensive in the craft stores. But you can find it online or on TeamU for really, really inexpensive. So don't buy it in the craft store, even on sale. And so what I'm doing is after I get it on, I'm going to take a brush. And you basically are burnishing it with the brush onto there. And you parts of it are going to come off. And that's okay because I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to look vintage. Um, I want most of it covered, but that's the reason why that we put the gold paint underneath is that when parts of it flake off, it's going to have like a two-tone effect to it. So it's going to help make it look vintage. So that is okay, but you do need to go, take like a soft brush and go over the whole thing and just burnish it. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to take um, some brown uh, wax from Dixie Belle. And we're going to go over our bunny. You see how gold, it, I mean, it's just a major difference than just using a gold metallic paint. And we're going to go over the whole bunny with the uh, wax because we're going to tone down the wax a little bit. I mean, turn down the bunny because it's going to make it look more vintage. It's going to be really cool when it's done, guys. And you're doing it just like, you know, any other thing that you would do. So I put it on and I take a wipe and I brush it off. Getting into all the little crevices. And I'm using kind of a stiff little brush just like you would a wax brush and making sure I get in all the little spots. And then I'm just taking a, a dry wipe and going over it and making sure that I get um, any, you know, where I have too much off. So when that's done, we get to put everything all together. See, that's where our bunny's going to go. He's going to fit inside the box standing there. And I'm taking my scissors and I'm kind of making like a little hole for him to sit in. And I'm actually end up, I don't glue him in there. I just kind of set him in there. I mean, you certainly could glue him in there. But he'll, he'll stay as long as you don't dump the box over. And now I'm just taking some little uh, floral picks. 
and filling up the box with just different whatever greenery I have that I think will look good in there and look good in our little vignette cutting little pieces off of flowers I got some of them I mean I get them from all over I have some from the Dollar Tree some from Joann's some from Timu some from Amazon I I don't even remember where I got them all I just have a big old pile of them and I whatever I think will look good and I'm adding um, flowers in the colors that are in this whole uh, vignette that we've been building there's some light pink there's some yellow a little bit of white and of course greenery and you know I just play with it until it looks good And here's the finished project. I think it turned out really, really cute. So the last thing they do is I have this bird that I thrifted. Uh, I showed it in a thrift haul a while ago. Got a whole bunch of them for five dollars. It's crazy. And added that to our vignette. And that's it. That's everything, guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And please do my brand new channel a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Share. And I'll see you again next time. Take care.